So I'd love for you to tell me about your thoughts on product-led growth, PLG, and how you think about it, because you're somebody who came from product and then moved into marketing. So can you kind of explain your, your theory on PLG and, and how you put it to work? Sure, sure. So uh, PLG is really well known when you uh, look at SaaS companies, software companies in general, but it's rarely um, a topic when you look at healthcare um, and, and medical devices. So I wanted to, I mean, getting familiar with the, with the strategy, I wanted to implement the main principles of product-led growth into what we're doing in um, medical devices and aesthetics. And so when I look at product like growth, it's really um, how you attract the customers, how you retain the customers, and how you uh, grow that customer. And it really helps you focus on two main um, things. It's the value proposition of your product and the customer experience. So coming from product management, it made a ton of sense to focus on um, the value proposition and the customer experience and using it as a tool in marketing. So if, for example, we're focusing on what would be the value proposition when we launch it, it, it makes it easier to um, develop the right products, put the right features in it, and then it makes it a lot easier to sell it uh, because we know that the product itself, the customer experience would be optimized in a way that will help customers talk about the product, help doctors, um, um, talk about the product with their peers and present in conferences and would really support all the marketing efforts that we should be doing anyways. So as you mentioned, it's common in software. For example, uh, if I'm creating a productivity tool or a communication tool or a social app, uh, product-led growth is going to be very common there. Can you give an example, though, maybe a concrete example at uh, Venus Concept, um, how you're developing you know, um, medical aesthetic technology? What's something that you could actually do in the product, in the customer experience that drives growth? Sure. So focus on the customer experience. If you, for example, look at our user interfaces, um, there are very different from what you'd see with our competitors. Typically, if you look at a medical device, um, even if you go to you know various clinics, not just in aesthetics, but aesthetics is the same, you see those old computer screens, very outdated software, which is really difficult to learn and to operate. So if there's turnover in the clinic um, and, and the, in the staff, it's really difficult to train new people on it. And it's, it's not as intuitive and, and for sure not uh, delighting the customer. So for example, if, if you operate a medical um, device by Venus, you, you see a user interface, which is much more like the one you'd see um, in different apps on your iPhone, for example. It's, it, we're trying to create this delightful experience, this intuitive um, approach and, um, it really helps. I mean, it gets people to love the product, to say it's so easy to use um, that, you know, anyone can start with it, which is sometimes, you know, sometimes doctors or um, clinics are kind of hesitant on, you know, getting new products because of the, the ramp up. Um, and we're eliminating that. It's interesting that you're bringing that kind of innovation because it's not an area that I'm familiar with. I don't use medical devices, obviously, but but to think about a space that has been around for you know many many decades, and I'd imagine that when you're building a medical device for doctors, you're not doing it with usability in mind. I mean, the idea is you're going to have to train a lot to do it. It's probably irritating to use, but there's you know the outcome is what is what the doctor you know cares about and what you're selling on so when you guys design something and you're actually focusing on the customer experience and making that a priority i bet that really separates you from competitors have you found it to be a real competitive advantage yeah definitely so when we do for example customer surveys one of the areas where we get the highest score is the ease of use 
and how easy it is to you know start with a product how easy it is to train various you know staff members on the product and and that's a huge uh, key advantage that we've identified and so we're doing that in every new product even if you know we're just upgrading the software we're making sure that it's going to look like you know an app from your iphone and not a an ultrasound machine from you know the 90s right I, I, that's so cool so you for seven years were at um were senior director of product management robotics and ebd at uh, venus concept and then in january 2022 you become the vp of global marketing and product management. How did you actually get the skill set? Because we're talking about product-led growth, and I'm sure you had experience there. But then, how do you actually take on the mantle of global marketing? Was there a lot of other stuff you had to learn? Well, um, yes, yeah, th there's always new stuff that I have to learn to date. Um, but I, I'd say that we've always worked closely with marketing, and a lot of the things that we did, anyways, were. Um, somewhere in between product management and marketing. I mean, because, because of the synergy and how closely we work together, um, it just, you know, a lot of it was, was there anyways. So yeah, obviously I had to learn, you know, all about how to manage events, how to, um, you know, do digital marketing. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'd say 80% of it uh, was, was there anyways. Be, because you already had a knack for it and you were interested or or because um yeah is that is that why or 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 is it because you were already working closely enough that you sort of learned on the job so we worked closely enough and you know i learned a lot um but also i always try to take i mean because it's a it's an area of interest to me i've always tried to take you know other tasks outside of my you know my my actual day to day um, and so a lot of the marketing activities, uh, I was involved with, even though I wasn't, you know, I had a marketing at that time. Right. A lot of people listening to this are going to have marketing backgrounds, social media, uh, influencer marketing podcasts, that sort of thing. What are maybe one or two insights you can provide to people that are in marketing that would really benefit them on the product side, uh, th speaking as a product person? So I think I, you know, I often hear from people um, in marketing and obviously in sales, but also in marketing that they don't need to know about the product or they don't need to know much about the product. And, and I, I think it's not the right way to, to approach it. While, while some people can truly be successful selling or marketing a product without, you know, knowing a lot about it, I think the only way that you're going to come across as authentic is but by knowing all about your product, knowing all about the competitive landscape, the strengths, the weaknesses, everything. And and I think, you know, to sound authentic is, is a key component in marketing. So buyers become a lot more educated and they don't want to buy something that they feel is pushed or, you know, um, pushed by super expensive campaigns or ads. and they need to believe that it, it may add value to them. So I think, you know, marketeers should focus on that value value. And for that, they have to, you know, know the product, um, you know, inside and out. Yeah, it, it's interesting that you'll have somebody come in on the marketing side and they really want to focus on their craft, which is maybe making great TikToks or let's let's do a, a really fun event. But the value of the product, if the customer is actually interested in it, as you know, as your customers are, they they want uh, you know a, a great medical device. If you focus on the selling points of the product, you might be able to to win them over faster. But if you don't take the time to become familiar with the product and really dig into, you know, what are those two or three things? What, what I find um, is that if you understand the two or three moments of magic of what is the product moment of magic where the customer goes, oh, my goodness, I, I just love this thing. If you can really capture and zoom in on those, then you can actually make much better marketing. <clears throat> exactly. It's, it's that aha moment that you want to reach with the customer. And, and you want to reach it fast enough and so that they see the return on investment. These 
our products and, and these products in general are very expensive. So we want to make sure that they're successful and they have this aha moment and they, you know, they're meeting their goals, um, you know, that they anticipated when buying this product. Yeah. Anybody, do, do you think you went from product to marketing? Do you think people, you think the move from marketing to product is a smooth one? Or, or do you think maybe you had an easier time um, uh, do, doing it your way? Well, I definitely think there's, uh, there's an opportunity to move from marketing to product. I don't think it's going to be uh, necessarily more difficult. I mean, obviously, it will depend on the product because some products would require more um, technical background or engineering background. But at the end of the day, I think product managers would really benefit from having the marketing um, background and the marketing experience, seeing you know what works with customers, what doesn't work, what's you know what works with demand generation, what's you know. Um, the easiest way to you know acquire customers um and and build you know these uh products or these features into the product in a way that would you know be enticing for customers when the product is launched so i i would definitely um consider um candidates coming from a marketing background um into product management roles very cool. Uh, well, Anat, thank you so much for joining today. This is uh, really interesting, and I, I really appreciate your insight on the on on how people should be thinking about product led growth. Because I would say it's probably one of the most underutilized um, tactics. I don't want to say tricks, but 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 understanding what is that what is that element of your product that people are really gravitating to can be the the greatest aha moment for a marketer. Right. All right, let's uh, let's cut it off there. Uh, 